thank you for joining us for Prevention Day and the presentation of the 2019 Prevention Champion Awards. This annual event is organized by Prevention Works Vermont, which is an organization that works with the 23 substance misuse prevention coalitions in the state to raise awareness and promote good policy statewide. I'm Lori Augustiniak, and I serve as the coordinator for Prevention Works Vermont. I'm fre frequently asked, if prevention works, then why do we still have so many problems with alcohol, nicotine, marijuana, and other drugs? Many of us remember the 1990s when our most, most urgent problem was young people dying in alcohol-related car crashes, and youth tobacco rates were soaring. At that time, the state of Vermont rose to tackle those challenges with cross-sector collaboration, youth leadership development, law enforcement trying new tactics, and the rise of coalitions. We realized that the environment that kids are raised in affects the choices that we make, <clears throat> that they make. So we changed the environment in many strategic ways, and rates for both alcohol-related fatalities and smoking dropped significantly. But the culture changes. And now we're facing a new landscape with marijuana and, uh, <clears throat> with marijuana and smoking cigarettes has given way, given way to juuling. It seems there's always a new industry ready to move in and sell habits to our young people, and usually ones that do not enhance their lives. So that is the power of prevention. Regardless of what our culture, the media, or policymakers throw at us, we identify the emerging issues in our community, and like the Avengers, we gather our team of community partners to neutralize the risk. I don't want to get too political this morning, but we are at the State House, and <laughs> no one can be near the State House these days without the issue of marijuana commercialization coming up. Earlier this month, Prevention Works released a statement on the commercialization of marijuana, and I'd like to take a moment to readdress that statement now. Prevention Works Vermont and Vermont's prevention coalitions are opposed to the creation of a commercial system for retail sales of recreational marijuana and clearly want to refute statements that commercialization of marijuana is needed to provide tax dollars for prevention services. It is true that the prevention system in Vermont is underfunded and lacks resources to implement strategies with the necessary frequency, intensity, and duration to adequately prevent substance misuse in our state. However, taxation and regulation that allows for commercialization is not good prevention. Our opposition to commercialization is not rooted in morality or outdated anti-drug ideology. Reducing marijuana use by youth and adults is essential to improving the health, education, and productivity of Vermonters. Vermont's prevention coalitions have been at the forefront of addressing emerging alcohol and other drug issues, and we will continue to address the drug issues that confront our neighbors. We invite Vermont's policymakers to demonstrate solidarity with our work by ensuring that adequate investment in public safety, research, and prevention precedes any further changes in the legal status of marijuana. In the past 20 years, prevention has become a science, but it's not a secret. We know what works, and we look forward to our state doing more of what works and less of what hurts public health. I would now like to introduce Commissioner of Health, Dr. Mark Levine, who clearly understands the power of prevention and is an articulate and compassionate advocate about substance use disorder issues and substance misuse prevention. Thank you for being here, Dr. Levine. Thank you as well, and good morning, everyone. Good morning, Governor Scott. Good morning, good morning uh, congressional partners, uh, and all of our allies in prevention, and especially our champions, who we are here today to honor and thank. I likewise will not be political, but I will say that I can guarantee almost that everyone in this crowd is pro-prevention. It's very hard to come up with an anti-prevention coalition. <laughs> so it's great to be in front of a friendly crowd. We all know that prevention reduces the risk that contribute to alcohol, tobacco, and other drug misuse, and promotes healthy lifestyles and healthy communities. In fact, that was one of my most cherished beliefs in my career in general internal medicine. And it was my frequent message to my patients. 
as well as an opportunity for many referrals to community resources to help these patients with the hard work that usually involved behavioral change. So it should come as no surprise that prevention is one of the foundational precepts of public health. It's a core goal and as is developing the means to achieve it. It's in fact almost an expectation that in any discussion that I have with the governor, with the legislature, with the citizens of Vermont, the importance of prevention will obviously be stressed. Hopefully people do not tire of hearing my message. But actually, to the contrary, the good news is the message is actually contagious. And now others engage with us in the health department about prevention because they understand that we are right and they want to learn more. This public health effort takes all of us working together in innovative partnerships and coalitions in every community in Vermont. And this is because we experienced as a state, and all too often on a deeply personal level, the terrible toll that diseases like obesity and chronic medical conditions lead to, and certainly the impact of substance use disorders and addiction. This latter is one of the most difficult and tragic complex public health challenges we have seen. Now, prevention is not a one-size-fits-all approach. It involves whole communities and systems, and it takes an all-hands-on-deck approach to solve and serve a population that are as diverse in their needs and as in the approaches we must take to meet them. We've long recognized substance use disorder as a lifelong chronic disease, and key to addressing this is to do what we can to keep people from starting down that road in the first place. Prevention is far more than a classroom lecture, and we're far beyond the Just Say No campaign. Our approach has been to build a system in which we're all vested in successful prevention, intervention, treatment, and recovery efforts. The advantage we have, just to make up a phrase, is prevention works. Prevention is the most cost-effective way to address substance use issues before they start or become more severe. Every dollar invested in prevention saves 10 to $18 in costs related to health care, criminal activity, and lost productivity, not to mention the emotional and mental health of every person who's positive, positively impacted. We are making progress, slowly but surely, but it really does take a village. We have prevention at the health system level, educating health care providers about the importance of finding alternatives to opioid medications and the dramatic decline we've seen in prescriptions for opioids to opioid naive, naive individuals. We have prevention at the community and school level, providing school-based services and community prevention grants, building regional prevention partnerships to prevent and reduce alcohol and drug use among teens and young adults. And we have prevention at the level of the health department's district offices, supporting a dedicated team of prevention consultants who help their communities with local efforts and policies. We're stemming this tide, but we need to continue to be sharp and continue to be innovative. We, we recently uh, had visit us in Vermont, a team uh, who uh, were not actually from Iceland, but actually spoke to the Iceland model. And we've actually had a team go to Iceland. And we're working, and they were working, to understand what are the various responses to stress that young people were using. For example, and this is very much oversimplifying things, people you could call risk takers opted for methamphetamines, while others who fit a different profile gravitated towards substances that were more sedating, like heroin or alcohol. This is fascinating work that really explores replacing substance use with the more natural highs or stimuli that sports can provide that sound after school activities can provide, what our previous visitors from Finland called hobbies. The work of our champions and all of you is also reinforced through resources such as parentupvermont.org, where parents and others can go to get tips and supports for how to talk with their kids about alcohol, marijuana, and other drugs. And our current Do Your Part campaign for safe disposal of medications contributed to the amazing results we again saw this past Take Back Day, 
with the results again measured in tons and not pounds of picked up medication. All of our work is data driven and it informs what we do and is a resource for our partners and our local coalitions. I'm excited about the newest effort for which I left a pamphlet on the table called PACE Vermont, which stands for Policy and Communication Evaluation. PACE attempts to get us real-time longitudinal data by reaching out to young people to better understand and improve the impact of policies and communication campaigns on their substance use beliefs and behaviors. And that's really what prevention's all about. Engagement, whole community systems of care, education, and support, and being there at the point of decisions. But I want to stress it is very hard work. But it's also not rocket science. It's very doable work, it's very understandable, often it's very intuitive work, and very passionate work for everyone who's engaged in it. And results do begin to validate the time and effort invested, often in just a few years, not in decades or generations. So it's truly an honor for me to work in a state of people dedicated to this effort. And speaking of our state, I'm pleased to introduce one of my and your strongest partners in all things prevention, someone who I've told to his face that he is a wonderful mentor and model for what being a prevention governor really should be, Governor Phil Scott. And uh, thank you, Mark, for those kind words. It's great to be here today. I think the best part of what I'm seeing right now uh, is that we're all together here. It's not always the case when we're in this uh, particular room, but we're all here together, and I see Republicans, Democrats, progressives, and independents alike all coming together for a common goal. And I think that that's the best part of what I'm seeing thus far. So I want to thank uh, Prevention Works for hosting this event, and bringing everyone together, and all of you for working to protect the health and well-being of Vermonters across our state. Your role in preventing substance misuse and in shining a light on this issue is so critical. Addiction has touched every community and every family in Vermont in some way. Nearly every one of us has felt the impact of the opioid epidemic. And if you don't think it has, you probably just don't know it yet and just aren't aware. This epidemic isn't biased or partisan. It's not just a city problem or a young people problem or a low income problem. No one is immune to addiction. And we all have a role to play in the solution, whether we're in Burlington, Brattleboro, or Barton. There are no easy answers. We must work together to continue to make progress. The truth is, sometimes this progress feels too slow, the gains too small, especially when we read another obituary or hear of another family member impacted. Jolinda LeClaire, who's here, my Director of Drug Prevention, often reminds us we must remain optimistic because if there's an opportunity for someone to access treatment, then there's hope. Our success can't be counted uh, or it can be counted, one step, one person, and one day at a time. And the truth is, many small states uh, steps often end up being the most meaningful. For example, think about the many Vermonters who participated in drug take-back days and safely disposed of about 20,000 pounds of unused prescriptions. And that's just over the last 18 months. And this positive, step-by-step -step attitude is how we have to approach this crisis because we know that nothing we will ever truly feel uh, to be successful is, uh, is something of this nature. While we still have so much more work to do, the progress Vermont has seen is a result of hard work by many, over many years across administrations, doesn't matter who the governor is, state and local governments and private uh, partnerships some of whom are here today with us. Beth Crane, uh, who we're here to recognize, is a great example, and one for us to follow. She spent 20 years building prevention programs in Franklin County, implementing policies to support healthy kids, 
particularly through mentoring. Healthy Lamoille Valley, whose work is also being recognized today, has built robust partnerships with law enforcement, employers, and higher education, using these relationships to strengthen prevention. And regional approaches, like the Newport and St. Johnsbury Regional Prevention Partnerships, are doing great work in seeing real results. While our work is far from over, Vermont has been a leader in addressing the crisis like the public health crisis it is. And that's thanks to the efforts of so many Vermonters who truly can't be thanked enough. As Dr. Levine just mentioned, we need to tackle threats as soon as we see them, which is why prevention is at the core of my administration's public health plan. Between 2017 and 2018, 1.5 million more kids began using e-cigarettes and vape products across the nation. Right here in Vermont, use among young people doubled. After all the progress made tackling nicotine addiction, this is not only concerning, it's frustrating. And I think many of us uh, and many of you know it's not my first instinct to add a tax. But given the health risks for our kids, this year I propose to levy, levy the same tax on cigarettes and e-cigarettes as we do on tobacco products. On a related issue, this is why I'm also advocating that if the legislature passes a retail marijuana market, it must include an effective public education effort aimed at young Vermonters. We need to learn the lessons of tobacco and have a strong prevention framework in place before we do this. The health and well-being of our kids is far too important. Ultimately, Working to prevent substance abuse is an investment in our future. Your work not only helps uh, those most at risk, but also strengthens the quality of life of all Vermonters in every community across our state. So thank you again for all you do, and thank you for having me here today. Thank you, Governor Scott. Research has proven that drug and alcohol addiction is preventable. And today we celebrate those who put that research into action through their work to decrease the misuse of alcohol, nicotine, marijuana, and other drugs, our 2019 prevention champions. Would all four representatives send one, or all four, um, excuse me, recipients send one representative up to the podium right now? Um, Remarkably, all four of our recipients work and live in northern Vermont and have met bi-monthly since early 2018 to coordinate prevention efforts across all of northern Vermont. This is truly an innovative collaboration for the region and the work they have done together is just one more reason why they're being honored today. And um, right now we're just going to present the awards to them and then they will all have an opportunity to say a few words to you, but in the interest of the governor's time we're going to do that part first. Um, and when you hear them speak, um, you, will, you will see that the old adage is very true, which is that an ounce of prevention is a lot of work. they're representing an entire coalition, we have some star awards for your whole coalition. <laughs> Regional Prevention Partnership. Yeah. 
So before we get to uh, all the good stories, thank you very much, by the way. Thank you very much for being here and for presenting the awards. Um, I would like to um, invite Catherine Becker Van Haste to the podium to share a few comments from Senator Sanders. Thank you very much. Um, it's great to be here today on behalf of Senator Sanders to recognize the great work of these folks and this, these organizations that they represent. Um, a lot has been said already about the importance of prevention efforts. I think that this state and frankly our country, again, sort of to echo what the governor said, this is also an area where Democrats and Republicans and independents in Washington have come to some agreement, which is maybe even harder than that happening in this building. So I think it's a real testament to the hard work that has happened in communities at the grassroots to raise the importance of this issue, uh, because without you, your representatives here in Montpelier and in Washington, we need you to understand the importance of addressing this issue. So thank you uh, for all of your great work in making your stories understandable, compassionate. I think that having empathy, compassion for each other is critical to this work. And so I really appreciate, and I know Bernie does, all of the work that you do every day to make this issue personal and relatable and available for all of us to understand. Um, I can say that from Bernie's perspective, prevention is not a bright line from one end to the other. It's a big gray band and for prevention for one person is gonna be totally different than prevention for another person. And I think we need to focus on our young people, but we also need to focus on our aging population. When you look at seniors, one of the biggest challenges is isolation in Vermont. And isolation is one of the leading causes of substance misuse. So that is why our organizations like our senior centers, our community health centers, all of the organizations, our designated agencies, all of the organizations in our communities, particularly in our rural areas that serve our seniors are absolutely critical to this issue of prevention. Just the same as our schools play a central role for our young people. So on behalf of Senator Sanders, I can tell you that he is fighting hard in Washington to start having a better conversation around prevention and funding for prevention at the national level. We've done a great job on some funding for uh, treatment and other resources. Recovery even is starting to have some conversation, uh, but prevention needs to be a better part of the conversation around funding in Washington. So I can tell you that that is something Bernie's working on on behalf of all Vermonters in DC. And again, thank you for making your voices heard and we're gonna to continue to rely on you, so keep up the good work. Thank you. And now I would like to invite Diane Derby to the podium to share a few words from Senator Leahy. Good morning, thank you for having me. I just wanted to, on behalf of Senator Leahy, thank all of you for the great work you're doing in the prevention realm. Um, it's really wonderful, particularly to see the RPP partnerships up here a few years back. We had a great event with the health department when they successfully pulled down the $12 million grant to support the RPPs and build that out statewide. And it's just really heartwarming to see the results of that. And it's been such a successful effort along with the coalitions, drug-free communities. Senator Leahy supports and is behind you all the way on all of these programs. And he's using his vice chairmanship with the Appropriations Committee to support everything you're doing to bring more money back to Vermont. Uh, we're now midway through a two-year, $6 billion, that's a B, $6 billion effort nationwide um, to support everything across the board, you know, treatment, uh, prevention, the, um, the, the whole spectrum, and, and particularly prevention. I think we're, we're really recognizing, as Catherine said, that prevention is such a critical player in, in many of our lives. So, um, you know, we, we see through the state opioid response grants that are coming in to, through the health department supporting all the work you're doing, and that's really critical, and we'll keep on fighting. Senator Leahy will keep on fighting for you in D.C. So thank you very much. Now the really good stuff. Um, today I want to spend more time letting you hear directly from our recipients, so my introductions are very brief, but that doesn't mean I don't love you all. <laughs> um, so first I invite Beth Crane to the podium, my old friend. 
Beth is being honored for the outstanding work she has done in Franklin County for more than 20 years with Franklin County Caring Communities. She's one of the original coalition leaders when coalitions first launched across the state in 1998. Congratulations, Beth. I'm going to say thank you to uh, the governor and uh, to you, Dr. Levine, for your leadership, um, and to you, Jim, 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 you were here a minute ago, uh, for uh, carrying the torch. And I also want to give a shout out to Crystal Lamb, who is replacing me as director, has replaced me as director. I'm now emeritus, I guess. Um, and uh, and I know there are a few other people in the room. I do want to say thank you to. Uh, I believe Jeff Moreau is here, and we've worked together for years in different <coughs> capacities, um, as is uh, uh, Jonathan Billings from Northwestern Medical Center, one of our great partners in prevention. Um, and, uh, and back in the room somewhere, I believe Tegan Duso from Enosburg Falls High School, Middle High School, is here maybe with some of her students, um, and I'll mention them in a minute too. Um, and so. Um, Thank you to all of you. Uh, I did start in this field, uh, number 20, no, 98, um, <coughs> working with Franklin County Caring Communities. Uh, and at the time, we were funded by Berkeley Communities, uh, Schools and Communities uh, Grant, and actually uh, a Safe and Berkeley Schools Grant before that. Uh, and have seen uh, how prevention goes over 20 years, and it's interesting to see how policies rise and fall and rise again. And, um, but uh, the things that I want to talk about is that we've always viewed prevention as being both, uh, first of all, wellness and youth development being key to prevention. Um, and then as others have described it, you've got a spectrum where you are looking at um, the individual and their wellness and their resilience, and on the other end of it, how does the um, environment in which they live support healthy decisions and make it possible for people to make um, good choices and to live a healthy life? Um, and so that um, you know that kind of brings us here to the state house today. Um, uh, over the years, we have, I, I can tell you that prevention works because uh, I don't think he's in this room right now, but uh, Senator Cory Parent from um, St. Albans was uh, one of our early recipients of one of our youth-initiated grants as a, he, in his early political days as a school council member at St. Albans City School um, and wrote for a grant and received it uh, to uh, make changes in his school. So. Um, and now he's doing the same on a larger uh, stage here. Um, and I, we know that prevention works because we did see um, use rates decline over a 20 year period, 20 year plus period um, from the high uh, levels of use in the 90s. They're still very high. Um, alcohol is still used by way too many young people. Um, and is used on a regular basis. And, uh, and that is an area, it's a legal substance, we all know that, but it's very much celebrated in our, in our uh, communities, in our society. We have a, uh, an economy, a local economy, based around uh, alcohol, which is wonderful in many respects, but poses a lot of risks um, and creates a norm um, that we in prevention are working to counteract. Um, so I feel as if the, you know, the work is ongoing, the culture changes, the risks change, the threats change, and the opportunities change. Um, we, I mentioned a moment ago that we had uh, Tegan Duso here from um, uh, Enosburg, and uh, one of our initiatives right now in addition to something, I'm going to plug a, um, I'm going to plug one thing, and then I'll get off the stage so others can talk. Um, I'm going to plug two things actually, one on different ends of the spectrum. One is a, a collaboration with our regional planning uh, council or uh, commission, um, and this we stole uh, from Lavoie County and then went with it and uh, 
uh, it's a it's a how-to planning for prevention guide for policymakers, and um, I have a few copies, so I'd be happy to share. And uh, what we did that was a little different was uh, to incorporate working with NMC, Northwestern Medical Center, um, Northwestern Counseling and Support Services, our RISE Vermont team, and other uh, partners. Um, a wide looking at prevention from the, the holistic viewpoint of mental health, physical health, um, opportunities for for activity in the community and um, uh, bringing communities together around common cause. Um, so that is one thing that is available. It's available online. We hope to keep it a working document. We're, we've rolled it out to our commissioners and we're rolling it out to our towns. Um, and then on the other end of the spectrum, uh, the work that Tegan is doing in our high school and that thanks to the United Way and many other fabulous partners, um, we've been able to bring together as a teen institute, a summer program for students uh, at, at the high school level uh, who come together with an advisor uh, for a, a short week of five days of intensive learning and working together and playing together and uh, and um, developing skills that they can take back to their schools and um, uh, offer uh, and, and promote change and promote support for their fellow students uh, in throughout the school year. So we're going to our, this will be year three, and we're very excited to be um, able to continue that program. And, um, and Dr. Levine, we are looking at the Iceland model. We're very much enamored of it. We recently had the presenters uh, come and speak to us. Um, so we continue to, to look at uh, new and old ways to um, keep young people moving on the path to, uh, to a healthy adulthood. Um, prevention works best when at the state policy level we are supported, our communities are supported in those uh, endeavors and uh, I echo what um, Lori said about the need to really think about how legislation uh, impacts people at the local level and what, um, what the long-term outcomes might be of, um, of short-term. So, thank you. Thank you, Beth. And so the next recipients, you guys represent groups, so if there's anybody you want to invite up here for some photo opportunities, I welcome that. So um, our next recipient is um, healthy Lamoille Valley, so I'd like to invite Jessica to the podium. This coalition is being recognized for their exemplary work in, Lamoille, in the Lamoille Valley region and the robust relationships they've fostered with law enforcement, area employers, and higher education. They've developed diverse relationships that have built tremendous capacity in the region. They engage youth at five area high schools and produce numerous resources used by colleagues and others around the state, like Beth just shared. Um, the planning, primer on planning for prevention, and also the new vapor alert handout that you created, which was great on drooling and vaping. So, thank you and congratulations. Good morning. Um, thank you on behalf of Healthy Lamoille Valley Coalition. Uh, we're really excited and honored um, to be here today. Um, the Lamoille, Lamoille Valley is an exciting place to live and work and includes Lamoille County and the greater Hardwick area. Um, building a coalition to prevent substance misuse is a privilege and a joy. Each day is different and we're out in the community meeting people and problem solving. Prevention work is a little bit like putting together a big puzzle with an ever-changing landscape. You know the work, uh, you work on things for days, weeks, and years, and then the partnership clicks and it begins to make a difference and that's so exciting. Um, while our work is uh, about 20 years in the making, we've seen tremendous increase in partnership connections over the last five years. Um, I'd like to highlight a few of those, um, and it just speaks to the importance of this work. Um, five years ago, we started working with the Lamoille County Planning Commission to create the primer on planning for prevention that Beth is sharing today, a, a, another prototype of. Um, this toolkit was created to provide local leaders with the language and tools to support local policy level change. Uh, we've recently um, seen and celebrated successes with the towns of Hyde Park, 
Elmore and Morristown just in the last few months, sometimes in some cases in the last week. Um, uh, this document was the first of its kind and many communities around the state are making it their own, which is really exciting. Four years ago, five people came together to host our first opiate forum for our community. We developed a pocket resource guide uh, that has been shared widely around our region and continues to be shared. It offers hope and for those struggling with substance use disorder, and it helps them to know what the resources are, where they can get help. Uh, that group, in partnership with Sheriff Mark Hu, has become the upstream Lamoille group. Uh, we come together uh, about every other month, and we have lots of key partners and stakeholders around the table, and we're tackling issues related to opiate misuse and dependence. Uh, we're currently working to plan our fourth families, and this year we'll have a, um, a focus on our, our fourth forum, and we're, we're, this year we're having a focus on families. Uh, this involvement led Sheriff Marcoux to see the need and become a key law enforcement partner in the statewide prescription drug take back collection program. Um, also in collaboration with the Lamoille County Sheriff's Department, we've created the Lamoille Area Youth Council. And this has been a really ex exciting endeavor. Um, three of our actual Lamoille County schools, um, Stowe, People's Academy, and Lamoille, we have representatives um, from each of those, student representatives, that come together every month, and they share what they're seeing, and then they take that, we take that information, and then we are able to use that in our greater prevention work. Um, on top of that, we're also supporting um, individual groups in all five of our local middle and high schools. We have OVX groups, VCAT, GSAs and getting to Y groups. And each of them is doing meaningful and impactful work. Uh, and this is probably our most rewarding part of our work as it connects directly with youth. And their excitement and energy is infectious. And unfortunately, because of the, where we are in the school year, they weren't able to join us today. Um, but I know they're here with us in spirit. Um, there's many other additional projects that staff and volunteers are undertaking. Um, Healthy Lamoille Valley is in the process of growing our steering team to include more voices um, so we can have more impactful work. Uh, we now have recovery, education, parents, and the family centers helping, as well as the Department of Health with us, helping to make decisions on a monthly basis. Um, coalition staff are doing groundbreaking work with retailers around best practices and even product placement in their stores. Uh, we have a pilot project with Northern Vermont University at Johnson uh, to embed prevention practices um, within their policies. And heard just this week that they'll be putting the prescription drug mail back envelopes in each of their residence halls for students. Um, we are about to go to print with a tool um, formed with community partners to address ACEs and building resilience. And resilience is a skill that we know is needed um, to help avoid substance misuse. There are so many projects that we're so excited about and hope to build on. Um, sometimes our days are not long enough. Um, we're most fortunate to have a strong TAF staff team. Uh, we have Allison Link taking the lead on policy and community outreach, and we have M. Delaney over there, um, who has upped our communications to a new level, producing documents such as the, the vaping handout that Lori mentioned uh, that's being used around the state. Um, we'd also like to recognize two special community partners who have been crucial to our work. Um, a big shout out to our Office of Local Health in Morrisville. We could not do our work without that support. Um, they're so crucial, they're integral partners. We attend meetings together, we brainstorm, and that's really powerful. And the other shout out is actually the uh, Floyd Neese and the Lamoille Family Center, who has been our fiscal agent, and they have been an amazing uh, partner and mentor in our work, and we really appreciate them. Um, so today I can stand here before you and share that I know prevention works because I've seen it grow, and not just grow but thrive, to engage students, parents, and diverse community partners. Our coalition is thriving because the community sees the needs to protect youth and to make substance prevention a priority. Thank you. Thank you, Healthy Lamoille Valley. So our last award is a group award, and as a resident of the Northeast Kingdom, I'm very excited to recognize our regional prevention partnerships representing the Northeast Kingdom, the Newport Regional Prevention Partnership and the St. Johnsbury Regional Prevention Partnerships. They have brought long overdue attention to prevention in the Northeast Kingdom, which is a consistently underserved region. 
The Newport and St. Johnsbury RPPs have built incredible capacity in a short amount of time. Prior to the RPPs, there was no established coalition in the region. Today, there are three, which are doing lots of policy work and building strong partnerships with key community stakeholders. I invite Sunny and Cheryl. And invite your gang. <laughs> And thank you. We would like to call our community partners up from 302 Cares and Peter. If you would stand with us, please, and also our staff. My name is Cheryl Chandler. I'm the Regional Prevention Partnerships Coordinator for Northeastern Vermont Regional Hospital. We want to thank Prevention Works Vermont for this award and congratulations to our colleagues who have also received awards. We are accepting this award on behalf of all whom we collaborate with in the Northeast Kingdom and you can see a great representation here this morning. We cover Orleans, Essex and Caledonia counties and the Newport and St. Johnsbury Health Department districts, which also includes Wells River, and we have a number of people here from the Wells River Coalition. We represent the Regional Prevention Partnerships, otherwise known as the RPP of Newport and St. Johnsbury. In St. Johnsbury, the RPP is held by Northeastern Vermont Regional Hospital, NVRH, a community not-for-profit acute care critical access hospital. In Newport, it is held by Northeast Kingdom Learning Services, or otherwise known as NECLS, and NECLS inspires and empowers learners from birth and beyond. I would like to introduce some of the other members of our Northeast, Prevent Northeast Kingdom RPP team. So these are the staff members, and we all work together. That's why we're appearing here together, even though we have two separate Regional Prevention Partnerships grant. We work together because we're served by many of the same services. Um, Sunny Naughton, who is the Regional Prevention Partnerships Coordinator in Newport and works for Nichols. Tennyson Marceau, Prevention Specialist for Northeastern Vermont Regional Hospital. And Allison Howell, who is the Prevention Specialist for Northeast Kingdom Learning Services. We want to offer a thank you to Governor Scott for all he does for Vermonters. And he would be happy to hear that not only are we here today to represent prevention, but we represent our staff for Vermonters who actually either moved back to Vermont or relocated to Vermont. And I know that's, that's something that he is really trying to accomplish. <clears throat> we are fortunate that we have been able to find work in human services in the Northeast Kingdom very rewarding and I want to say that prevention is alive and well in the New York New, Northeast Kingdom and you can see from the representation that we have here today that it's thriving and we know that prevention works. Also Sunny and I have been fortunate to be uh, welcome to the Opioid Coordination Council Prevention Committee representing the Northeast Kingdom uh, by Joe Linda Le Leclerc Rose Gowdy and Dr. Mark Levine. Thank you for including us in that. We're so happy to be here with you all today. And in addition, we'd like to acknowledge our legislators and the representatives from uh, Senators Sanders, Leahy, and Welch's office that are here today. We work with them as well. We depend on their help to keep our youth safe and substance free. I'll just send you my right here. We also work closely with our local offices of the Department of Health. The RPP grant aims to reduce adolescent and young adult substance abuse while increasing the capacity of the state and local communities to, pro to provide prevention services. So I'm sure as you can see here, we've increased, increased the capacity in our part of the state. And having everyone travel down here with us today is a big treat. This work is very close to our hearts as well, as members of our team and our coalitions represent lived experiences in this arena. Both NVRH and NEKLS hold a tobacco prevention grant. This grant aligns with the Regional Prevention Partnerships grant and aims to educate all on the risks of tobacco, e-cigarette use, 
and advocate for policies to decrease tobacco initiation, secondhand smoke, and tobacco marketing exposure. Allie and Tennyson, here with us today, offer vaping and tobacco awareness presentations to our communities, including area schools, and they work tirelessly to affect policy change in our communities. They've found certain communities to be especially ready for change, including the Village of North Troy, Lindenville, St. Johnsbury, and Danville. In the Northeast Kingdom, we share many of the same services, as I mentioned earlier. So it seemed natural that we should combine our efforts to ensure that there's no duplication of services and that we're co covering our entire service area. We would love to share some examples of our collaborations and recognize our community partners. We have built strong community coalitions. Community coalitions are known to be effective in building a community's capacity to bring about population level change. Their success is dependent on all sectors of the community becoming involved. Sectors that include parents, students, schools, civic and volunteer organizations, youth serving organizations, law enforcement, government, business, faith organizations, health organizations, media and other organizations that address substance abuse. And you can see that many are, are represented here today. In the Newport District, we've created the PETER Collaborative, which stands for Prevention, Intervention, Treatment, and Recovery. This came together when members of the Newport City Police Department, led by Chief DeSantos, who is the PETER Chair, met with Michelle and I at NEKLS, in addition to our designated mental health agency, NKHS, to discuss the fact that we needed a combined community response. We looked to Project Vision's Matt Crowdy for guidance, as well as DART and St. J. And I absolutely want to recognize Joe Linda's um, always supporting us with Peter and always giving us shout outs. And it's been a real encouragement to have your support um, in the work that we do. Northeast Prevention Coalition is a subcommittee of DART, which is otherwise known as the Drug Abuse Resistance Team in St. Johnsbury. It's been meeting since 2017 and represents Northeast Kingdom communities in support of healthy choices and using a variety of strategic interventions. It's dedicated to preventing substance use, misuse, and abuse for all ages. The Coalition 302 Cares is a group of individuals and organizations who agreed to work together for the common goal of reducing substance use, misuse, and abuse among youth and adults. In November of 2016, a town meeting was held in Wells River, um, and about 100 community members turned out for that meeting. They were concerned because they had three deaths uh, within the past year uh, due to opioid overdoses. And it was a grassroots effort to form a coalition there, and many of the people are here today. You can raise your hand so people know who you are. Um, and, um, this led to the formation of the coalition that still exists today, uh, which is a subcommittee of the Wells River Action Program. And coalitions do not exist without people. So we want to take a moment to highlight those from our communities that have joined us here today. Kelsey, and please raise your hand or step forward so people can see you. Uh, Kelsey Root Winchester, who is a parent and a school board member from Wells River. Deputy Ken Schaefer from the Orange County Sheriff's Department, and he is also a law enforcement against drugs instructor. Michael Brandley, a substance abuse recovery and trauma coordinator from Little Rivers Healthcare. These are all members of 302 Cares. And then up in the Newport District, which goes all the way from Glover up to Canaan and over to Jay Peak, we have Michelle Tarek, who is our Peter Treasurer and also our Northeast Kingdom Learning Services Executive Director. And Michelle has gone to bat so many times to get this programming in our community and to allow it to continue in our community. And I personally want to thank you for all of you that you've done for us. Lisa Daigle Farney, she's the Northeast Kingdom Learning Services Director of Community Education and Outreach, a Peter member, and a strong leader for the prevention programming that we're building out at Northeast Kingdom Learning Services. Thank you. 
We also have Suzanne Legary belcher our Northeast Kingdom Field Director. We're so happy to have her here. She represents Newport and St. Jay. Suzanne came on about two years ago, and there have been so many things that have been able to take place because of her investment in our community. We also have Sierra Ruth, our Youth Empowerment Specialist, and also the coordinator of the new Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Vermont that we have uh, a chapter of in uh, Orleans and Northern Essex counties. So Kimberly Diamond, who is the Executive Director of the state uh, program, is here along with her other team members. And I just want to say, someone told us last year we couldn't do it. They told Ali and I it wouldn't happen. And we have 10 matches right now. So it can happen. <laughs> to have Tom Howell, our Peter Steering Committee member from the business community, who serves as the, the Director of Safety and Risk Management at JP. Thank you, Tom. Um, I don't think there's too much snow up there today, so we're appreciative that you can come down and be with us. Um, an example of a really important collaboration is the fact that the RPP was able to bring together Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Vermont and JP. JP has come on board as a founding partner for our local chapter, and we want to extend a thank you, not only to providing opportunities to the youth in our community, but JP has made a vested effort to recognize how mentorship can be fulfilling for their employees to participate in. So we really want to thank Tom and Steve Wright, who can't hear, be with us here today. He said he's on the wrong coast, and I said, just not the right coast. So he's on a trip, but we really appreciate it to them. And also, I wanted to mention, we do a lot of work with Kane in, which is sort of an outline community, and they just took this simple effort to put Big Brothers Big Sisters information in every single one of their report cards that went out in January. So something that simple can get the word out there and really help the work that we do. So thank you so much. One more person I forgot to mention, Sheriff uh, Bill Bonyak. Raise your hand there. He's, he has um, offered his staff to our coalition here in, in Wells River, which has been really helpful. We appreciate all of your support. Thank you. Another example of our collaborations is mental health first aid. And both um, Sunny and I are trained to deliver mental health first aid trainings. And we feel that it's really important because it's so closely related to substance use and misuse. It's an evidence-based in-person training program with proven ability to teach individuals how to recognize and respond to the warning signs of mental illness and substance use disorders and link people with appropriate treatment and support. We have partnered with Northeast Kingdom Human Services and Vermont Care Partners to train teachers, youth service workers, camp counselors, law enforcement, and 4-H leaders, just to name a few. In, during prevention week last week, uh, last year, we delivered the same prevention message throughout the Northeast Kingdom. So we partnered and um, made sure that everyone was hearing the same message from both of the regional prevention partnerships. We've only touched on a few of our prevention initiatives, and we plan to be here for the entire day, so please stop any one of us uh, Tennyson, Ali, Sunny, or myself, and ask us about some of our initiatives or some of the things that we have discussed that you have more questions about. Lastly, thank you to the Vermont Department of Health Division of Alcohol and Drug Abuse Programs and the Division of Health Promotion and Disease Prevention for providing the funding that allows us to do our work. It's incredible to look around the room and see all of our colleagues and friends and to think about the amazing amount of collaboration that has taken place in less than three years. We have a strong foundation in the kingdom and if you have not already done so, we invite others to take part in our efforts. Thank you again. for all of our 2019 prevention champions. So thank you for standing with us for so long. I have one more fabulous thing um, to do, which is to introduce Jolinda LeClaire. 
who is Governor Scott's Director of Prevention Policy and provides oversight and management of Vermont's Opioid Coordination Council, and she would like to share a few remarks with us. Thank you, Maureen. When you were the last speaker, and when we are already over time, and I knew this at 11 o'clock last night when I was finishing writing my remarks, you know that you must truncate. Um, what I also know is that many of the people in this room and people who are not here have sat at tables with the Opioid Coordination Council. And one of the things that we learned really early on is that prevention had to rise as a primary focus of all of the work that we do when it comes to substance use disorder and mental health issues. Um, we cannot silo substances. You all know that. Yeah. And upstairs right now in House Human Services, uh, or in a little bit, um, they will be talking once again about a bill, S-146, which will take the Opioid Coordination Council, the Vermont Alcohol and Drug Abuse Council, and a few others and consolidate into one mega statewide prevention council. This is something that our governor, and I just want to say our governor and Commissioner Levine, um, they are walking the talk. They understand what prevention means. And part of it is going community to community and understanding what the Northeast Kingdom is doing, what Franklin County is doing, what healthy Lamoille Valley is doing, Orange County, I don't know how many other counties are represented here. Um, we need to celebrate the work that's happening on the ground, and we need to understand that. Um, critical to look at pathways for change, policy, program, infrastructure and investment. And the Opioid Coordination Council had five drivers looking at those pathways to affect change. Prevention, intervention, treatment, recovery, and enforcement. I just want to say law enforcement is critical at the community, regional, and statewide door to impact the change. And we all talk about collective impact. I also talk about collective action. And that is what you are all doing. Um, I pretty much now scrapped my remarks, um, but I want to say that it is the collective effort in this room that has made the difference. You have built those big tables, the 100-person meeting in Wells River. I know Wells River very well. Um, the 100-person meeting that happened in Newport, and the list goes on and on. One of the sad things is that it oftentimes takes crisis for us to convene. And however, when the crisis happens, we have to hold hands. We have to invest the myriad of resources that are oftentimes really challenging to find from the, all different sectors, and we need to put them together in one package. I truly believe that 2019 and beyond is our time for prevention. I think the governor has made that commitment. The commissioner, the alcohol and drug abuse programs director, and the new de deputy commissioner. It is an all-in approach. Um, last group mentioned uh, business. Jay Peak is here today. And I know there's a business person from Wells River. Again, at the community door, it has to be all hands. This new council includes youth. It includes elders. It includes people in recovery, family members in recovery. It includes treatment providers, recovery providers, um, somebody from the academic community, because data is important. One of the things we oftentimes struggle with is getting enough data in order to inform our best practices. So I'm going to close by saying I'm optimistic. I think we have done much at least in the last two and a half years since I have done a deep dive on the topics of substance use disorder and the intersect of all of these drivers to affect change, the partnerships in the room and the people in the room are how we move forward. We are paving the way to create a statewide system of comprehensive prevention programs, school-based and community-based. We are creating a statewide prevention committee. 
We are creating the pathway to an investment model. And the commissioner and the governor and I and many of you understand we have to have a sustainable investment model. And lastly, having a statewide prevention leader who's a cheerleader for the work that you're doing and amplifies the message time and time again. You need to make sure everybody in this state house has one of these stickers. It takes 20 times to penetrate a message today. So keep talking, keep doing the good work you're doing, and uh, let's celebrate years of prevention as our priority. Thank you. Thank you, Jolinda. So just a couple of quick housekeeping things. Um, at 12 o'clock, we will be celebrating our prevention champions in the cafeteria with cupcakes, so please join us then. Um, at 1 o'clock, we will be recognized on the house floor, so if you're still in the building, please go to the house chambers when they convene at 1 o'clock, and um, you'll be represented. And if you reach out with your, to your legislators, they can also represent you individually as a group. Uh, individually as a group. Individually, your group. <laughs> And then at 1.30, um, over at the Capitol Plaza, um, Dr. Andrea Volante is doing a presentation on juuling and vaping, and we welcome you to join us there, and there'll be some more refreshments in case that's an enticement. Um, so thank you to all of you for joining us this morning. I'd like to extend a special thank you to all of my colleagues and the thousands of volunteers you all work with across Vermont who provide information, enhance skills, improve neighborhoods, create policies that support public health, and provide support in your community. With you, prevention does work. Thank you. Thank you.